All right, today we are going to install an aux beam aux power. So it's a relay box controlled by a simple controller. So this is the six circuit one, and uh, we are going to do our best to get this thing installed on the tracker today. This box is a wired controller style box, so it does have a wire, a communication wire that goes inside the vehicle to the switch panel. Uh, still a very simple install, but it is not a wireless uh, style. They also make one in a wireless version. This is the cheapest one I could find that seem to be of high quality. Um, now I'm just trying to figure out where I'm going to put this thing. So ideally it'd be close, close to the battery would be ideal, but there's really not much room over there. So I end up putting it on the passenger side. All right. Well, mounting it is easy. It's just two bolts. So I'm using rivet nuts uh, to do it. And just little quarter 20 rivet nuts, uh, pretty simple install. Just use a center punch to find, make my marks and then bolt it up. Okay, so I put a distribution block on the firewall. Um, that is out of a 80s or 90s GM car. Um, I, I tend to grab those out of the junkyard. They're kind of handy little distribution blocks and get them for a dollar at a uh, pull yourself wrecking yard um, and the cable was not long enough to make it to the battery obviously because I put it on the pass on the driver's side and the batteries on the passenger side so I am going to use a used amp wire so it's a four gauge wire with a I think mine has a 60 amp fuse in it uh, which will be more than enough for what I'm running but you may need a larger fuse than that uh, but the four gauge should be big enough up to 100 amps so uh, that should work so repurposing as much stuff as I can on this thing All right, so for lights, um, I got these guys from Nightlight. Uh, they're pretty heavy duty ca casting. I've never used them before, it's the first time again. Um, but what I'm thinking I'm gonna do with them is put them under here like this. Uh, try to keep them as far back as I can. Um, it's, it's not ideal, I don't really want them down there because as you can see, I, I run over a lot of tree, small trees and stuff out when I'm doing the logging stuff out back. But uh, I don't really have any other place to put them. Um, without, I don't really want to block my radiator at all, um, although I could have them there. But uh, this, I think, looks pretty good down there. Um, so I think that's going to work out pretty good. So that's what we're going to do. So it comes with two different sets of brackets. One's long, one's short. I'm going to use the short ones so it keeps it up as high as I possibly can. It's not a ground clearance issue at all. I mean, I got frame rail and stuff sitting there anyway. Um, it's just the fact that if I hit a branch, it's gonna fold underneath the, the rig and it's gonna be basically pushing on this light. So that's my, my biggest concern. But this, it, it is pretty heavy duty, so I'm hoping it should survive stuff like that. So, All right, so I hate doing little intro videos where I tell you what I'm gonna do because I always change my mind. And uh, I change my mind on where I'm gonna put those lights. I just, I just couldn't do it putting them under there because I know um, as I'm running over brush and trees and everything, um, even if it doesn't break those lights because they are pretty heavy duty, it's still going to move them. So they'll probably always be pointing at the ground uh, since as I'm running over a bush, it'll probably pull, pull it down. Um, so it, that would just make it utterly useless uh, for, for me, for what I use this for. I do forestry stuff um, and, and it's just... It's just uh, not not very practical to have that thing uh, underneath. So I'm going to put them up here. I'm going to end up centering them underneath the headlight or kind of towards the inside of the headlight. And then we'll notch that grill around them. Uh, and it ends up looking pretty, pretty nice. So what I used for mounting that is, since our bumper is pretty heavy duty, I used a very large uh, self-tapping screw. Uh, to, to do it. And then I did some precision body work there to add some clearance so that I could get the light mounted back a little ways. Um, no one will ever see it unless you look for it, but uh, it, it, you know, I'm not, I'm not super worried about it, but uh, some of you might not want to do that and you just sacrifice a little bit of cosmetics. Uh, but if you're going to do cos do this more for cosmetics, I think they would have looked better underneath the bumper. Um, it's just practicality wise for me, uh, that's better above the bumper. All right guys, so now I am going to wire them up. I am going to run each light individually with this cabling. So it's it's two 18 gauge wires in a rubber sheathing. Um, it, it's like molded into it. Um, so it's, it's pretty good for abrasion and, and that type of stuff. Um, so it, it's pretty convenient 
uh, for this type of install. Um, I am going to run each light individually. So I'm gonna actually be running the ground all the way up to that distribution block, which doesn't make a lot of sense, um, except for on rigs like this, where you're going in and out of water and that type of stuff, um, to keep all the grounds and all that stuff up into one common spot. You're not chasing them or chasing grounds around where you use the sheet metal screw to go in or whatever you did. Um, th this will keep it a lot simpler and it will install very, very quickly. Um, the other perk of doing it this way is if I ever wanna change how that relay panel works, like say I want my front left and my right rear on at the same time for whatever reason, um, I, I can wire them that way if I want um, just by switching them at that relay panel. I never want to do that, I don't think, but you never know. Uh, I've done weirder things. So uh, anyway, this should go pretty quick. After I get these wired up, we're gonna go ahead and trim the grill and then get that back installed and then we'll move on to the rear lights. So I'm using heat shrink butt connectors. Uh, I'm just going to hardwire every single one of these lights in. If we ever need to change them, I will just cut them off and redo the connection. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. Um, and then I'm doing heat shrink over them. So I'm, I'm shrinking the butt connectors and then I'm doing heat shrink over that uh, just for extra protection and just cosmetically. Um, and now we'll start fitting the bumper and figuring out where we need to cut it. My grill isn't painted, so I'm going to go ahead and just use a putty knife uh, and a torch to basically milk cut mine. Um, and then for the long straight cut, uh, just kind of laying the putty knife on there flat using the entire width of the putty knife. Uh, that'll keep you nice and straight, so you're basically just doing a score that way. Um, and it, it'll, it'll keep it nice and straight, and once you get about halfway through or so, you can just snap it right off of there. Um, and then you'll have a bunch of melted plastic around the edges, but that just pops right off uh, very easily. Um, I'm going to probably replace this grill at some point with one uh there's a lot of modifications done to it and i would like to replace it at some point and kind of uh, do, do a lot better trimming so i didn't do a very good job uh going around the lights i just did kind of a crude cutout. um now for wiring uh into this relay panel all you have to do is just put the positive wires in the right terminal for the button that you want it to be in so they're labeled one through six so if you want it on the first button uh, upper left of the control panel just put it in number one so it's as simple as that uh, you can move them around as you want all right so that's the light um, from when i restored ram burgundy it used to be the bed light um, it still worked, but I, I put a new one on it when I was redoing it. Um, and, I, and then I used the long brackets off the lights we just put on the front and put them with the feet facing in and they exactly fit where the rubber bumpers were on the spare tire. So that's going to work out really good. Um, I think that looks all right uh it's it's kind of goofy it's offset and it's on the tailgate but it should work um there's already a plot a space to run wires on the inside and then i had conveniently have a hole there okay so there's that I just ran it basically how the third brake light was ran. Uh, I still need to tie it there, but then just through the door, then out across the bottom. And then I just ran it down the frame rail the whole way up front, which was fairly easy, but there's not much to tie it to. Um, and then it comes up frame rail and then over and there it is. So let's see if it works. All right, button two. There it is. Ooh, that's a bright one. All right, so now we're gonna do side lights. So these ones are gonna be here with these little brackets, which I'm not a huge fan of this style. Um, and then the front lights are going to be pointing at a 45 degree angle forward and to the side. So um, this should be pretty easy. And then we're going to redo, I'm gonna redo the wire that I put underneath. I ran the rear tailgate wire underneath the tracker. Uh, I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna actually run it on the inside of the tracker um, with our two side lights. So um, I wasn't happy with how, how I had to uh, mount it up to the frame on the inside. I feel like it's probably going to get ripped off at some point, um, even though it's up high sticks and, and, and I run over a ton of sticks and branches and stuff. 
Um, and those are just brutal to wiring and stuff. So I always like to keep everything kind of a little more armored than it is. Um, and the factory wiring, I believe, is on the inside of the frame or somewhere where you can't see it down there. Brake lines and all that stuff are all hidden, so uh, which is pretty nice for the sticks and all that stuff. So now I just added something that could be a problem in the future. So I did this just there is you just eyeball, you know, basically half uh, and then make two marks. It doesn't matter where um where this is at you don't have to actually have it in the middle and now you just go in between those two marks so if this was large and we made two marks it would still you'd be putting your light in the middle of it um so it's pretty nice to use calipers to do that stuff um because we can eyeball in between that there's just a little quarter inch void there um so now we just got to figure out where we're going to put uh from the top down and then i'll go mark that on the other side so that we make them exactly the same even though it really doesn't matter that much Okay, so this thing is triple wall. So there's two walls pretty close to each other and then there's an inner one about that far away. Um, and there's actually a cover on the inside there that you can pop out with a pretty big hole, uh, which will be handy when we're running the cable down. Um, I'm gonna try to run this one over the top, inside of this, uh, over the top, and then down the other pillar. Um, I think we'll be able to do that, but uh, only time will tell. So uh, I'm gonna drill that out to the next size bigger and then we're gonna install rivet nuts. So these are a real simple installer. Um, they work pretty good. Okay, so I always like to measure. I don't rely on their dimensions. So just take a, you know, just cheap set of calipers like that, measure, make sure it's not squeezing it, and then measure it. So conveniently, these ones are the exact same size as the rivet nut one. So we'll use the same drill. And then we'll the same process, we'll drill it uh, through both walls, and then, uh, We'll drill it through both. I think what I'm gonna do is just line up with the bottom, right in there on that bird poop. Then we'll, we'll prime it with our makeup brush and Rust-Oleum. Oh, conveniently, was a hole already there on that one. So that'll, that'll make it easy. It's a pretty big hole, it looks like. Yeah, pretty big, wide open hole right there. So that'll, that'll make it nice. So this should fit right in there. Yeah, it's gonna go, but we wanna prime it first. All right, and then on this one, remember the wire's gonna be pointing forwards. So don't just drill in the same spot, thinking you're being quick and efficient or you'll end up with a mess. So it'll be the same deal, just level with that, but right, right there. Emily came to see my really adorable car. Oh yeah. I'll leave these you here. You can use her, uh, her newly found upholstery skills oh, yeah. to help you reupholster your seats. Yeah. In like two weeks, they still have shipping confirmation. So I ended up failing trying to get that to go across. Um, I didn't put a ton of effort into it. You probably could get it to go across there. Uh, but I, I, for some reason, could not get that wire to go across the uh, overhead part where the dome light is. So I just ran it down to the floor and ran it across uh, underneath.
Okay, so when you're when you're doing the hood, the wires coming down the hood, you gotta you gotta leave a little bit extra there, so it has a a place for it to bend instead of fold, if that makes sense. Um, and then make sure that that hinge there is kind of like a guillotine, so you kind of want to stay away from the hinge. So if you're doing this on a tracker, uh, that little area there that looks like it's supposed to have switches fits perfectly with the six switch uh, controller. So, All right, so I did something that Will hates, but I put primer 94. So it's 3M primer 94. It's, it's just a brush on stuff. Since we're not going to be able to use the entire sticker, it's only going to basically be maybe a little better than half. Um... I went ahead and used it and then uh, the sticker probably won't come off so when we go to take it off it's gonna be a pain in the butt if if that ever happens so it's kind of a pro and con here's what the can looks like I'll put a link in the description below for that stuff um, it, it does work good uh, some car wrapper guys use it um, it's not a good idea because when you go to take the wrap off your paint comes with it so it it's uh it'll it'll ruin your paint so if you ever had that happen before that's probably what they did um but you know it'll work so i'm gonna trim i'm gonna put this on there and then trim it with a blade um i'm not gonna try to film it because i don't want to set up the camera just to do that i'll show you when i'm done okay so there it is so that is not going anywhere it's part of my dash at this point um, okay, so now we just need to put on our stickers. I believe that's my fan. I, I disconnected the fan from the AC and I made it so that I can just turn it on. Uh, so if, if we're doing some trail crawling, and uh, trail crawling, I can just have my fan on uh, while we're doing it. This is our, our front lights. This is our hood lights. This is our side lights and this is our reverse. And then that's blank and spare. So we, we can do uh, put something on that one later. So I'm gonna get some alcohol, wipe this off and then we'll stick our stickers on. Okay, so I'm just going to double check things. Fan, that's definitely the fan. Front markers, that's definitely front markers. Hood lights, that's the hood lights. Side lights, uh, side lights. And then that's my reverse. Very, very cool. So, oh, actually, look at that. I don't know if you can see that in the mirror. So I got it wiped down with alcohol. Um, I just used 70% alcohol. What that means when it says 70% is it's 70% alcohol and then 30% water. So you wanna make sure that it is all the way dry before you try to put your stickers on um, or you have water under there and you probably ruined your sticker. So just always keep keep in mind that um, you don't want to use 100% alcohol it will usually eat the surface of whatever you're trying to wipe off all right guys so there it is with the buttons on it so I, I did find something very cool so it takes just a second for it to come on when you turn the ignition on um, but it has memory so wh what it'll be like say you always have your bumper lights on and your hood lights on um, now if you push off it turns them off, all everything off, and you turn it back on, it turns the two on. And that also works if you have the ignition off and then you turn the turn it back on again. Um, if you just hit on, it still remembers the two that you like to have on all the time, So, uh, which is kind of cool. So anyway, I, I thought that was cool. I really like the, that I can have that electric fan on now. Um, when I, you know, for when we're trail crawling and stuff and I want to keep it as cool as possible. Um, so that, that'll be pretty helpful. Um, and then we still have a spare. So uh, maybe someday we'll get air lockers or something and I'll be able to turn them on just by hitting that button. But uh, until then, we just got the five things.